that I can also learn. So the purpose of coming here is not to teach you this. So please be very, very liberal while asking the question. But the rule of game is, you raise the hand, I'll allow you to ask the question because we have to finish the topic. Uh, before I start, you know, because I know few of the students, but I like to understand the class structure, right? So how many of your engineers? How many of your colleagues? One. Good. And you like one. What about Thomas? And what is the, I mean, I just asked the question you just did. I was told that a uh, lot of people here had good experience of working in IT center in two, three years. So how many of you have had more than three years experience? More than three. Okay. How many of you are from IIT? IIT center, I'm guess. Oh. Okay. Power, electricity. Renewables? Only one. That's the other thing that's not. Competence and renewables. A lot of others, in fact. Okay, we'll not talk about that. So, before we start, in fact, let me tell you that we'll be covering today's global energy scene. This topic is magnetic numbers. I believe that uh, energy is not an individual country phenomenon, it's basically a global phenomenon. And uh, when we say global phenomenon, we need to understand the dynamics of you know, movement of the fuel, the reserve, production. So I'm talking very really general, but it will give a overall perspective of global energy value chain. And based on that dynamics, we try to work some scenarios. I don't know whether we'll be able to finish on time or not, but I will try my best. So the structure is, we are talking about energy today, tomorrow, um, what kind of consumption we do have, what kind of production we do have today, in all, fire, natural gas, coal, electricity, renewable, we will be covering all the topics, and we will see from the micro, macroscopic angle, we will see from the top level, not from the micro level not from the industry perspective. You go from the top level, you see different countries, how they are using their reserves, what kind of flow is there in different countries, different continents, and how it is going to shape the energy future of the world. So, then we'll try to have a small and very brief look into the future because this brief look into the future is very important to understand how the sector is moving. And when I say sector is moving, today we will not talk India. In the entire 40 slides, there's only one slide on India. The rest, everything is international global. So please broaden your mind. We're not talking about India. So India will be touching while my discussion is. That's all. Do we have Michael here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hello. 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 So everybody knows, I mean, no need to emphasize this energy needs to end tomorrow. All wealthy countries, especially OECD, America, Canada, non OECD countries like China is also not consuming in a big way. But wealth is very important when you talk about energy. Because energy, most of the world, is sold at market price, unlike India. Okay. So, if you see, we will start with how the global energy, especially primary energy, I will ask some questions. You know the units of million ton of iron current? You understand that? Yes. 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 You understand MBTU? Yes. 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 You understand metric ton also, I hope? Yes. Yes. So, this unit will be interchangeable. <laughs> So don't get confused, it's just go the percentage a kind of concept, right? That's very important. But I will be using this units, MTOE, BTUs, you know, metric tons, million barrels. So interchangeably. So don't get confused by these numbers. Just see, try to see or uh, understand the overall scenario. This is the 2010 energy consumption. If you see here, this is from BP statistics. Oil, coal, and gas, all fossil. Consuming or contributing around 80 percent 
to the primary region. If you see this, more than 25% coming from coal, around 41% from gas, maybe around 5% here. So, we are consuming around 12.8 gigaton of iron pellet, primary energy. Primary energy. You understand primary energy? What is primary energy, Rajesh? Tell me. Sir, primary energy means uh, the energy consumed by uh, primarily from fossil fuels. Anybody else? Primary energy? Raise your hand, please. What is primary energy? It's very important to understand. Is electricity primary energy? No. no, no, no. What is electricity? Energy which we derive from the natural resources and then we convert into some other shapes. Like like natural gas is a primary energy. We use to So if you see this And this is very important. If you see, one thing is very important in nuclear. Nuclear is around 6.5%. Though in India it's around 1 or 2%. But if you see the global energy region, nuclear is <coughs> around 6.5%. Hydro is surprisingly low, 2.5%. Very low, isn't it? Because we say that in India we are not using the hydro. There are so many potential to hydro. But if you see the globally also, hydro is only 2%. Maximum 2.2%. Oil. And I was reading today that uh, even up to 2035, we can expect that I will remain there at least 35 to 40 percent. So you cannot force the event, the IR is going down. Either remain constant or go up, and don't go down. Now, if you see this, when you convert primary into secondary energy, how the energy flow is there? Transport is the largest consumer. Then electricity. And then heat, sorry, then first is heat, heat is basically, so the heat is also waste. Uh, heat is not purely electric heating or house heating, which is the big way in uh, developed countries. Heat is also waste. Transport, electricity. And here comes the most important slide, because this is shaping the time of the future. If you see here, Green one is Green one is yeah. If you see, we are somewhere here. This x axis is income per capita, y axis is energy consumption per capita. All the top short OECD countries are so many here. They have high per capita income at the same time they have good energy consumption. In India, you see we are surrounded by North African countries or West African countries, so we can talk there. Let me suggest you India doesn't matter as far as energy policies are concerned, except they just see us hats, different, nothing else. When global energy has sit in the IEA or WEA in America and Paris, they don't see India. They just see they are the numbers, nothing else. They, they are the big consumers. But when they talk about policies, etc., they see towards China. So China is very close to us. But really, India has more or less, you know, seems to matter, but it's coming to big way. You know? <coughs> this slide is very important to understand how I read the slides for you, for your consumption, so that you can really understand. But this slide gives you a broad hint how things are shaping up. The next item, very five more. <coughs> See this. <coughs> After 1970, almost every country, their energy intensity has gone down. When I say energy intensity, energy consumed for per million dollars or GNP, whatever. How much they are putting in to get out of it? If you see here, every country, starting from US, Germany, Russia, France, Italy, everybody has dropped their energy industry massively after 1970. What happened in 1970? Oh, <laughs> they could understand that iron will not last for long, so they should reduce their reliance on iron. They should shift their energy conservation, renewable, whatever, and they should try to find some better resources. Very strange but true. China. See China. When China has recognized this fact, and China has also started reducing their consumption beyond 2002. India also started reducing because we know we cannot survive. Energy is there, but energy is scarce. We have to conserve it. 
So this recognition is there. And when China and India approach for climate change discussions, they always emphasize that we are, though we are not contributed though that much in carbon dioxide emission in the farm, but we are with you by reducing the carbon density. And based on this standards only, we are discussing climate change platforms. That we are there, we are reducing. You must be really crazy that China will reduce their emission intensity by 16 percent by 2020. India will reduce their emission intensity by 15 percent. We are not talking about in in absolute sense to reduce our emission. We are talking about <coughs> relative terms. That my GDP will also grow at the same time. Also, try to reduce. I will become more efficient by using super critical, by using more renewables. So they mean by this. They are not saying that we will consume less energy. They are saying we will consume more, but be more efficient. So we are talking that. This slide shows that. This is the per capita consumption for top, you know, top countries. And it is surprising, India is not here. But India consumes, India is somewhere here, Asia, now you see this. India will find itself something like that. So if you see, we are consuming around 10 times less than America, around 7 times less than Canada and OECD countries. We are really very poor consumer of energy. Not good or bad for <coughs> But right now our consumption is very, very low because of other countries. Yes, please. Yes. Sir, sir, when we take per capita, then since the India has a lot of population, yeah. then per the absolute value may be high, but when we calculate it as a per capita, then its value becomes very low. No, even in per capita consumption or even in overall consumption, we are very low. Just one example I will give you. Listen this carefully. Right now in America, per capita electricity consumption is around, around 42,000 per annum. Canada around 24,000 because there's like 36,000. In Norway around 27,000. In Germany which are the middle western US, European countries 17,000. China is around 2500 units per annum. World is around 2700, 2500. Very close to China. We are around 700 units. Right now, right now, what is the stall capacity of America? Electricity. Any guess? 10 to 5? Okay, what is the India capacity? 190,000 megawatts. Okay, as on as 31st, broadly. What is the stock capacity of China? Somebody said 600. I need more. Any wild guesses? It has crossed 10 lakhs. What is US? Around 10.5 lakhs. So we'll just see the absolute numbers, they're per capita numbers. Definitely, if the numbers are less, and the stock is more, this will be high. But see, in absolute terms also, they are much, much, much ahead than us. So no comparison. No comparison. <coughs> so I'd like to touch now, oil first, how this oil is distributed here. You know, if you see this, <coughs> <laughs> right now, my consumption is around 89 barrels per day. This is all our reserves. I'm talking about reserves. I don't get confused. RP ratio, you everybody knows. Everybody is an energy expert here in that sense. So, we are left with RP ratio of 46. I don't believe in that, but since it's IA numbers, I have reported. Peak oil, so everybody must have added it. You must be getting it also. Peak oil. But, this is very important to see that Middle East has around 54, their RP is around 85. Second is somewhere here, South Central America and Korea. This are going to be the same producer. Do you understand same producer in oil? Do you understand the same producer? I'll be touching it next time. India, China, Australia, Japan, they have only three percent. This line tells about the production. How much reserves, how much production? Let's see this line. It's very important slide. If you see this, this line shows a lot. 56% with what reserves, they're producing 30%, consuming only 8%. Middle East. See here. Less than 6% reserve. Consumption 36% producing only 70% balances. Energy customers. See this. 
9% reserves, 70% consumption, production, 5% consumption. Where CIS, Russia is really going to matter in next centuries. Again here, 70% reserves, 9% production, 7% consumption. See this, which is driving the world crazy. 3% reserves, 10% production. They are exhausting faster. 31% production. So everybody is seeing this. Every country, every country. So this is primarily the main producer and consumers. You can see this, the, the, the very important point I like to highlight here is Iran. Iran is nowhere yet, but they have good reserves. They have good production. What is happening to Iran, which is killing, I would say, their markets or their future potential? There's something has happened to Iran or going to happen with Iran. What is the problem with Iran? They have got good reserves, but they don't sell too much. Why? Because they, uh, the currency in which they are trading, US is putting some sanctions that you cannot trade in dollars. You can say there's embargo. Very right. Good. There's embargo. US has put embargo on European countries not to buy anything from Iran. And Europe is quite close in that way. They, it's connected also through land also. But they cannot buy from Europe. They cannot buy from Iran. So even if they have got good production, they're not going to sell it. They consume locally. I'll show you that. And the highest subsidy in the world, because they have so much gas that they're bearing it, or they're asking them to take it free of cost. Because consuming and storing itself requires a lot of cost. So producers just allow consumers to take away the gas. They just pay the pipe and use it. You know. So highest subsidy in gas is in Iran. And this is really you know, uh, affecting the global energy region. Because if this gas is available, if this oil is available in the market, the price will definitely comfort it with the same fact. There will be efficient consumption, which is not happening right now because of embargo. So this is the moment. You see the consumption, production, and demand. Now see the moment. If you see this, they are the largest exporter all across the world. Max with the CIS, they are also making good for them. They mainly, CIS is mainly importing to, exporting to Europe. You know, there is a country called Saudi Arabia, everybody must have heard. They are the highest reserves, I showed you. They are very close to Europe and America and their party alliance. And they work as a sink producer. What is sink producer? Whenever, whenever we can see there is a glut in the market, there is a shortage of the oil in the market. Saudi Arabia has a capacity to bring additional quantity of oil to balance the prices. So normally in case of oil, it is the Saudi Arabia which is working as a single producer. In case of gas, now more of this. Russia has taken shape, but so far it has not happened, but they are going to be uh, we'll talk about natural gas. Again, I will directly jump to the slide which clarify everything. Just like it's for natural gas. Again, see this. Very important one. Having 41 percent of reserve, producing 14 percent, consuming 11 percent. So whatever they are producing, they are consuming. There is not much lack for us who are deficit gas countries. They put, they, they export only 3 percent, nearly Qatar. Qatar is the country which is which has huge of natural gas. They you know export us some, but that is very less. So both in case of iron and case of gas, you can see. So the um, Middle East countries have huge reserves, but they hold it. And let me tell you, they're not monopoly. Not monopoly. Most of the Middle East countries are part of OPEC. But OPEC group, we understand that OPEC group is quite a monopoly. They are trying to hijack the prices. They try to take advantage of prices, but it's not the case. Because OPEC countries are not obligated to follow the quota restrictions. Let's say OPEC decided in a meeting that you have to buy this much, you have to produce this much oil. Countries are free to decide their own quotas. So OPEC is a basically non-binding kind of, you know, they are very strong body. And here comes the role of Middle East. Most of the countries in OPEC are from Middle East. Therefore, what I like to suggest here, that Middle East, though is a part of OPEC, but it also very positive as far as working as a sink producer. The same Middle East country, Saudi Arabia, try to balance. Because they know one thing very categorically, because after the Ayasha, after the 84 episode of 
prices went down. They know very, very working very well. If they will create artificial scarcity of oil and the prices goes skyrocket, countries will switch over to other fields. And lot many countries in this Middle East are depending upon oil for their survival. So they know they need to take the prices up to a level to sustain their production. But if it goes beyond a level, they're gone. So they try to maintain the production in such a way that prices are normally kept in a in a particular zone, in a benchmark zone, under 10, 100, they don't the others. So this is the study they are offering, both in case of petroleum product, especially crude oil and gas. This point I like to highlight, you know. So they have a very little reserves, you know, 4% gas reserves, producing this much, consuming this much. But recently Brazil uh, has come out with a huge, huge discovery in pre salt area. Huge discovery. Petronas. And if those supplies come in the market, market will abandon with the gas. One thing is very clear here, which I could not show you. Gas, people are saying in fact, if you go to the international what is IEA according to <coughs> gas is entering the golden age. The next 70 years belong to gas. Because of the discoveries. And secondly, but there's one very major difference between oil and gas. You must be understanding your energy students. What is the difference between oil? Raise your hand, please. I'll prefer that. Anybody knows what is the difference between oil and natural gas market mechanism? Yes, please. Oil is a fungible commodity, whereas natural gas is not. Okay. I want that to listen commercial aspect and market aspect. Uh, natural gas is almost compatibility monopoly because it cannot be stored. And natural gas cannot be stored, you are saying? Yeah. It can, it, if you need to store, you have to convert it to liquid that has huge cost. Generally, they prefer uh, continuous transportation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, UK, mm -hmm. uh, BPS uh, had a monopoly market over there. Okay. And uh, it's like uh, infrastructure, the cost of uh, installation is very high. Okay. Generally, uh, yeah, infrastructure is okay, natural gas standard is very high. I understood. But the, I like to hear one particular aspect. I'm sorry I could not able to convey this. Uh, I think let me tell you. Means, oil. Oil. Yeah, please. Uh, natural gas is less polluting. Less polluting? Because okay. In terms of okay, very good. What else? If you see one thing, you know, this is natural gas. I showed you the oil reserve also. Natural gas is quite evenly distributed with MMP continent. There is oil is not. And that really meant when you work on a market mechanism. It really changes the commercial dynamics of natural gas market and oil markets. Therefore, in oil, we do have three or four benchmark indexes, Brent, WTI, Nigeria, Dubai. I mean, these are the four major benchmarks. When gas, there are plenty numbers of benchmarks. Why? Because the regional. So this really affects the entire trades of gas. Now, what's happening here? I can just that's it. You know, Euro is seeing a lot of <coughs> shifting because they are now not taking nuclear as their you know, foremost options. I and mean, some countries have shifted to Germany, you know, Italy has decided that they will shift to France, which is depending on 85% of nuclear. They are now more or less shifting to renewable or gas because gas can easily take over. Because uh, technically, you must be knowing this. If you are shifting too much on renewable, you need to have natural gas. Why? Why is that so? It is based on the intensity of the renewable. Exactly. It's a very wide point. When you have renewable, there's an intermittency, there are unreliability issues were there. there you, know, you have cyclic flow of the power. To absorb the peak and valleys, you need to have natural gas open cycle, which can absorb the load. Right? So natural gas and pump storage plant and the strong grid. These three things are go hand in hand with hand in hand with renewables. So natural gas and renewables go hand to hand. That's why Europe is shifting towards natural gas. Apart from nuclear, because they need to. So their reliance on CIS countries, especially Turkmenistan uh, and other countries, have they like they are laying the line. Similarly from Russia, they line laying from the top. So this line is also coming from here, Nagoka line is also coming. So this is why the gas has become very important. <coughs> Similarly, you know, from Sakhalin here to China, the line is going on. The work has started. 
So these three lines are going to change the energy landscape as far as gas is concerned. If you see this, who are the main, main gas consuming? Again, see this. They are 125 are producing, 123. They are consuming. They have to. Because no, there is no buy for them. Because they are See Russia. 530, 330 the balances, export to Europe. And Iran has huge, huge potential. Huge potential. So I think now people have to talk about working, you know, how to lift the Iran embargo. But Saudi Arabia is refusing, I mean, they are not very happy with that. But there is a serious thought process, even in Europe and America, that the embargo should be lifted so that more and more gas can to the market and that can balance these energy mix. This is the energy flow. This is important for us, you know. Austria is building, Austria has reserves of gas. Australia has now started building LNG facilities, liquefaction, because they like to export gas. And that is really factory Qatar. And if you can see right now also, Austria is importing, exporting some LNG. You know, why LNG is being based being built in Australia? You know, Japan and China, they are depending on Malaysia and Indonesia for some of their supplies. See this? <coughs> they are dependent on Malaysia and Indonesia assuming to exhaust their gas supplies in seven eight years. So they need Japan, China, they need alternate sources of supply. Here comes Australia, and Australia is coming with huge capacity around 42 million metric <coughs> ton per annum. Huge. Qatar is 100, they are coming with 42. We also source some gas. Petrolite energy has also sourced some gas from Australia. But Australia is going to become next energy hub. Any questions? Yeah, so this is very important to understand. In fact, for us also, I mean, Australia can become a viable supply source. Because Qatar has some tendency of monopoly. And there is some time, it will give me some time. I have a very good case study how Qatar is manipulating the entire industry of market. Very smart case study, and they are really manipulating the price. One thing which I have discussed here because natural gas can be the future of your your area. Natural gas market for India and Japan. What is the price? I and mean, let me ask you to understand this. What is the price in Henry of natural gas? Why will you put dollar? Anybody knows this? <coughs> no, natural gas. Henry of price. Fourteen dollars. Somebody said fourteen dollars. Somebody said eight. Nine. 12 to 40 dollars. It's probably around the 12. No, no, no. It's only 4.2 dollars. And this is ranging between 4 to 5 dollars from the last 5 years. And then the reason, and the other thing you see, and there's a lot of supply comes from different pipelines. And in the last 4 or 5 years, tight gas and shell gas production is not huge. So because of that, uh, the consumption and gas, uh, production of the gas, you see, you was in the previous slide, I think. Consumption and production almost constant. And they are meeting this demand for shell gas and tight gas. I hope you understand shell gas and tight gas, right? I am not covering that again. Yeah. So, now, I just like to highlight this point. See the gas prices in North America, 4.2 dollars. Uh, Europe, 9 dollars. Japan, 14.5 dollars. India, 14.5 dollars. China, 12 dollars. Why this difference? Can anybody say why is the difference? Apart from demand and production, demand and supply. Somebody said transportation. Import of LNG. Import of LNG, okay. Yes. Capacity to source gas at different levels. Capacity to source gas. Normally, if you are touching the point, where I will be cutting dots, it lead to one answer. You know, because if you see the price, high prices are in Asia, slightly lesser price than Europe, and the, the lowest price are in America because they are the producers. What they do, in fact, this country, Middle East, you know, they are trying to manipulate. They are trying to link the gas price with the crude oil index. In energy terms, in energy terms, crude and gas are definitely connected. This all started in Europe sometime in 1954 when they said that gas <coughs> at that time was being used to replace the naphtha oil production. You know, earlier oil was used for power production. So they said that this much unit of naphtha is producing this much power, 
this much gas is producing this much power. Let's link it because input is in kilocalorie and output is in kilowatt hour. So they fix that benchmark. But that benchmark is no more working now because gas is used for heating, <coughs> gas is for transportation, and gas is used for power also. So that linkage is no more exists. But this countries are again insisting because they know we don't have gas, we need energy. So some other way, they are still maintaining the, they we call it slope. Right now the slope is 14.5. If Brent oil is 110, we have to pay around 14.5, 14.5 110. Japan also pays it. We also pay it. We also India also pay it. But we are proposing it because we think that gas can be sourced at very cheap. But if I know the LNG dynamics currently, somebody said transportation. If I see the company investment in LNG, it doesn't cost more than six dollars to transport the gas from Qatar to India, but we are paying fifteen dollars. Just demand and supply gas, and they are trying to manipulate us. Cool. So, so, yeah. So, what is the role of Russia with twenty-six percent of the world reserves and Gazprom being the monopoly in Russia and it developing the infrastructure like South Stream, Nord Stream, yes, pipeline, yes. and also with the China, that is the China opening route to Ukraine. And what's the role of these two countries? I told you that Russia is going to become the same producer. You know, right now also, right now also, I mean, I mean, this is a very strange story, but I should share with you. But Russia has become the same producer for gas. Because the biggest consumers of gas outside their own country, because of their own normal production, is mm -hmm. Europe. And their 50% supply comes from the Russia. And even in the future, the delta increases, the marginal increase, that is in Europe of gas. And again, they are sourcing the gas from Russia. So Russia has become a big producer. So no other country, like, you know, they have got resource, just in the direct concept. The other supply source for Europe is North Africa, Algeria. So, but around 10%. The balance is coming from Russia. So Russia is overall becoming. For all Europe, sink producer. Whenever they feel that North Africa is going to blackmail them, they pump in more gas. Yes. Sir, I recently read somewhere that Europe is actually trying to bypass Russia altogether and get gas from the Caspian Sea because Russia has a tendency to block uh, gas to Europe when it feels that they have not paid up prices are too low. So, do you think that? Uh, two things have happened in just last one month. You know, uh, we see the map of the world. Yeah. Very close to North Pole, you know. They have fine big, big resources of the gas. You know, so, you know you're very right in fact that there's always a tussle between Russia and Europe on pricing. But the pricing <coughs> issues are the same. Because we know pipeline gas costs not more than five dollars, but they are charging the nine dollars. So they want them that similar to in UK. In UK there's spot pricing, like NYMEX, like uh, and we have similarly UK is NPP. In NPP, the price is around five dollars. They say adjacent to me a neighbor, you know, who's buying the gas from Denmark, from from Oslo. There's also another like pipeline from Denmark to UK. Yeah. They are selling at a spot that's around five dollars. Germany, France, Poland, other countries which are depending upon Russian gas, they say across the neighbor there is a country who is sourcing the gas at five dollars. You are selling at nine dollars based on an old logic of iron. Please do away with it. That fight is there. That fight was never go away because they need the gas and they have the gas. That's apart from that. But now one thing has happened, which is showing a cardinal, you know, relationship between these two is, you know, XMOI. <coughs> September, if I'm not wrong, 17. XMOI and Gazoprem has made a GD and they're investing money for gas. Right? Building the pipeline. Yeah, building the pipeline. First, EMP, but then explode the gas. Huge gas fields. So this equation will change. And Exxon Mobile, I think France has put the money in Exxon Mobile. So the MNC, European Exxon Mobile headquarters has put the money in. So relationship are becoming better. He is also referring to that Nabucca pipeline. Nabucca, exactly. <coughs> yes. Nabucca, I discussed here. Yeah. Yes. So this is Kohl's. Uh, a topic we wish to close to our heart, unfortunately. So, India, fourth largest. Again, consumer, third largest. But it is a million ton of iron. So, we listen or we hear or read the numbers in the so don't get them. 
the territories or anything like that. One thing is again very clear in Australia, 235. And see the conversion. <coughs> they are the very big exporters. Something has happened in Australia recently. What has happened? GBK acquired Okay, GBK, Lenko. Apart from that, something has really changed the power equation in the country. Like they changed the tax. Yes, yes. Acquisition is the old phenomenon. They had done something on 12th of, I think, September. They introduced the carbon tax law. In which they are putting around $40 for the metric ton. But huge, in fact. And it has changed the dynamics of coal. Now, imported coal is costing me around $140 on Australia. And it's changing the dynamics of power sector. So, Australian coal is no more competitive for us. We have it as a corporate we have it. We don't have coal from coal India, we don't have coal from Indonesia also has made a link on the market index. And Russia, uh, Australia is a big source for us. So which is really scary for us in fact. We are seeing a very dark future for us coal to very good users. If you see in fact coal seems to have a <coughs> potential. We do an average RP ratio of around uh, 200 coal to India has uh, RP ratio of around uh, 106 years, as per the statistics. I have a question, I have a question that if do we do have so much reserves, if you RP ratio of 106, if globe has a reserves of, you know, RP ratio of around 100, then why coal is not emerging as a good option? Dirty, one pretty, okay, polluted or what else? Okay, what else? It's not economical to derive all that that is present. So I'm just asking a question, you know. Seeing all this dirty, polluting, environment, non environmental friendly, ash content, blah blah blah, whatever. Again, I don't come to India. This is being probably. How do you see the future of coal? Coal gasification. Go down, go up, go up, go up. Coal to liquid. Coal gasification is coal to liquid and coal to city. Just follow the process. You can make the oil from the coal also, I know. But right now, I'm just saying coal for the day. Which has purely contributing to our energy production, electricity production. How do you see the future of coal? Next 30 years and next 30 years. And why gas? Please, please raise your hand. Don't whisper. Raise your hand and ask. Okay, please. Dominant regional duties. Those are things which have will be using for vehicle production. Okay. So uh, let me ask a question from you. Uh, right now, I think coal is contributing around 45% or 28%. How do you see that this will go down or go up? In 30, let's go up 35, 30. The percentage will go down. Okay. Good guess. Let's see what happens. We'll discuss that. There's a slide on this. So, I just like to show this because most of you will be working for coal based plant in the future. We are here, you know, we are importing. Now it's around the 89 million metric and this is 2009 data. It has gone up to 90 million metric and it is being stacked. That by 2017, we'll be importing 225 million metric tons. I don't see there's a reality because we cannot afford to import 140 or 145 dollar per metric ton coal from Russia, from Australia or from Saudi Arabia. We cannot manage that. So, but these are the numbers I just thought I should share. Coal is basically consumed locally. Some 16 or 18 percent is <coughs> traded. Unlike I have 45 percent is traded, gas 30, 35 percent. Coal is in that place only 16 to 18 percent. So if you see, I mean, just scenario. In 2009, we are consuming 1345, sorry, 5850. In 1990, it was 3400. Coal has really gap space. They're not gone down and lost 39 years. You may say, you may say that, sir, at that time there was no climate change. But if you review your policy and your 1990 started. So coal is still a very dominant source of supply for electricity specifically. And this is the moment, I mean China, sorry, China is now importing from Australia also. Africa is also exporting to some part of China and Europe. In Europe, some countries like Poland, like uh, Denmark, like Germany, they still use coal, and they are mainly imported. Renewable sources. This is an interesting slide, and uh, just see the slide for two minutes, and tell me 
one really remarkable change, which has happened just in the last one year. Just see this slide on one minute. I'll give one minute. <coughs> This is in gigawatt. Now raise your hand. Anybody notice a very, very important change which is often last one year only? Excellent. Somebody said solar. If you see, <coughs> the total solar capacity is 40 gigawatt. Today, 2010. But in last one year, 17,000 megawatt capacity has been added. Unfortunately, India's is only 12 megawatt. It's last year. Today, it's 72. But the major is in Germany, China, Italy, US. So this is going to take us to the future, you know, solar PV and not the Muslim is there, so I'm talking about that. This world is coming. And this is a huge change. I mean, 30 out of 40,000, only 17,000. Almost 50 percent had been last one year. And this is going to go up 20,000 this year. The way things are shaping up. The only slide I've taken out is the electricity. I just want to show this slide to you. <coughs> For different uh, continent, if you see the dependence on different girl makes different. Europe, America. There's a similarity between America and uh, somewhere, you know, China and India provide the bus. They are all for every use of course. Some percent are nuclear, some percent are hydro. But uh, America is very close to coal consumption. They are up to 50 to 53 percent. Coal consumption. China is around 73 percent, we are around 69 percent. So, for electricity generation, there are different fuel mix. Somebody said that regional load profile, regional fuel mix will definitely. Somebody said on coal, what is the future of the coal? So, is there really the right? See the China, all black. So, if you compare how the uh, electricity generation has changed in Last 25 years, around 25 years. See this, and this is strange, you know. Again, just see for 30 seconds this time and get the major change in the chart. Raise your hand, please, and you are using that to control answer. And no clear. Yes. Gas contribution has gone high. And high Gas high. contribution has gone up. Yes. What else? Hydro has come down. Excellent. What else? Oil is going down or constant? Down. 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 Check. Check. Hold. Constant. I see. One thing. One thing. Yes. Nuclear. Can you talk nuclear? People are saying there will be no future. There is no future for nuclear. But seeing this, I don't see there's the end of nuclear so soon. I don't see. These are the top countries who are I mean, consuming the coal as a percentage of the coal. South Africa, 93%. They got two deposits. Coal and also two deposits. Yeah? Sir, uh, this is the spoke in uh, which I prefer that solar TV seems to be the future which is going to, you know, appreciate uh, all the, the rising demand. But if you see the unpredictability of the, the solar in certain areas, do you, do you, from your experience, do you see that nuclear would pay more of a, of a um, share in, in, in uh, having the energy demand situation or would solar come into the same world? So you need to understand one thing. I mean, when you are comparing nuclear with solar, first of all, there is no coverage. Why I am saying so? I mean, again, I because we are in global energy. <coughs> Traditionally, in Europe, nuclear has got the best coal, not coal. You know, in India, it is a coal, right? 
So if you're talking about as a peaking road, right? not so far, because we can get it. My peaking road is very clear. In India, we have peaking road, let's say from morning 9 to 1 p.m., then things in 5 to 7, whatever. So we are seeing solar as a peaking road environment. So there's no competitive in nuclear. But if you talk about commercials, let me tell you I'm a big proponent of new nuclear. Because nuclear, very well cost is very low. Very low. And in many other respects, because you all industrial power, nuclear is a much, much better and reliable source vis a vis solar. There are some safety issues. But I think this is my personal view. And I can give my personal view, no issues on this. I think nuclear, we cannot deny nuclear as a viable option. We cannot afford solar. We cannot afford gas. We don't have money to pay for polluting all the gas. I think nuclear, third stage, after the thorium comes, in fact, water prices is offered to us every day. But the price is not much, let me tell you. If you make the gas so unpredictable and the price goes up every year, the variation in the oil index changes your gas price. Solar, I'm seeing a bit, whichever solar I think is mini P, whatever demand at the night, I don't see anything. So the comparison has to be. You know, base load versus base load, peak load versus peak Excuse me. Yeah. Sir, uh, the reason that we've seen so much uh, high peak demand in recent times for solar is because of the low cost of panels because of China. Uh, that China is mass producing solar panels at lower cost. But now China is also getting into uh, windmills. And it is saying that it's going to produce uh, turbines, which are 10% cheaper than GE investors. And it's also setting up plants in the US, which is the first Chinese plant to be set up in the US. Do you think that in coming times, wind and solar PV would would be facing off because one wind has has uh, needs less money to set up, and if it becomes more economical in terms of you know China mass producing 10% cheaper than GE or rest as itself. So do you think uh, globally, but now Brazil has taken a contract in that particular company. So do you think uh, we will see more in wind than in solar? PV? Exactly. That's why I showed this slide to you. See the slide existing capacity of wind. I don't see this gap would be so high if you use solar wind, but wind is definitely a much better source as far as cost is concerned. Definitely. Wind availability again, you know, intermittent, both intermittent, both unreliable. But there's one factor with wind which is, you know, uh, troubling the European especially is the night nighttime wind. There's a huge nighttime wind, there's excessive consumption, the excessive production of power, and sometimes utility has to pay the consumers to consume. So unreliability is a big thing with wind. But I see wind definitely commercially is a much better source than solar. But with wind, you have to put a lot of money, a lot of investment in grid. A lot of investment. And since European has a strong grid, they would absorb the grid power. That grid power. India, in fact, uh, Yesterday only I was talking to Mr. Sony, who is the head of the transmission company, who was saying that we have asked the government of India, we asked the state government not to increase the renewable sources generation more than 7%, apart from hydro. Right? Because with hydro, we are around 14% now. But without hydro, we are planning around 10 percent by 2020. He said, no, the mine grid is not stable. We have to pump in huge money to build that strong grid to absorb 7 to 8%. We need to have a lot of investment for making the effort. So it requires huge investment when you go for wind. For grid. And we are making that. And wind is definitely viable. So I am not denying it. And the data source shows it that wind is definitely and let me tell you wind has more or less achieved grid parity. So there's no comparison again to solar. Solar is still far off from grid parity. Wind has achieved grid parity. This uh, group we're talking, I, this is just one slide that I use the Indian primary consumption to flow. That's the way you not find India. And if you see this, you know, how the India in comparison with flow, this is uh, what? This is India. And the major difference is in coal. Around 53% we are consuming. In our primary consumption, we are going to around 30 gas, I will say more than the same. And now, oil, difference is there. Nuclear, okay, difference is there. But this slide shows that my reliance on coal is still very high. It's always more. Now, try to cover this slide. This slide is nothing but future. This one slide. I will ask you to see two minutes so that I can explain this slide to you. Because this slide is very important. This slide is based on the IE exemptions. <coughs> Assumptions. IE is the Paris International 1986. 
we have worked out the scenarios and just try to see how the future will be looking like for us. And let me explain this slide is how the different power so different sources of energy has performed between 1960 and 2000, uh, 1960, 2010 and 2010 to 50, right? This is how different years, 60s, 2010, my fair mix would look like in primary supply. <coughs> So, one big year trend is coming up, we from here, you know. The trend is, one thing is gas. Though the percentage of gas is not increasing much, but if you see the overall consumption to the national numbers, so this demand is definitely two or three times more than the energy consumption, in 15 to 3 times more than 2010. The gas contribution is immense. Immense. Gas is. 31% coal from production going down. The future. See the labels. What is labor contribution? 43%. Not much, but if you see here in the 16%, maximum is hydro. Because no take hydro as a label, we don't take it. When we talk in India and renewables, we are only confined to wind and solar and biomass, blah blah blah. So one hydro is a renewable. So this is what being the I said being the goal, not in India. So here from here to here, there's less hydro because whatever sources of hydro they could have exhausted, they exhausted, they consumed. Now there's not much left. Now it is primarily solar, wind and biomass. Biomass huge future. So this 23% maybe come from hydro, not hydro, wind, solar, and biomass. See the nuclear stage. <laughs> this is very strange. Four percent. Five percent to fourteen percent. Do you believe in this future? So what the next slide is yes. Now I'll ask I'll be asking a few questions, right? So I gave you all our scenario. So do you believe in this world in any future? Yeah. You tell me. What were the assumptions of IEA? A lot of assumptions. I mean, uh, it would take two days. <laughs> just, <laughs> just see this number. Uh, assumption is basically one thing, you know, they don't see. They don't see availability. Of they see the demand pattern also and the climate change policy. Those are two very important factors. Availability is definitely a criteria. But Europe and uh, Europe has mainly said no to coal, mainly to nuclear. This is one of the mm -hmm. primary drivers. And then they are seeing what is the availability of natural gas. This too, the natural gas is definitely affecting a lot in their decision making. There is, this is not a scenario which I should have talked. There is a scenario which is called natural gas scenario. In which gas is contributing around 30%. Here we saw like 31%. I did not discuss that scenario. But that is pro-pro gas. Very biased towards gas. But I discussed a normal scenario which has been discussed by IEA. The reality here is that what Nathan suggested. Without nuclear, you cannot see the future. For China, for India, what is that feature? I cannot afford so much. I cannot. Coal I cannot buy. Just one data I like to give you. In 2017, India, I'm in India. 2017, for power sector, we need around uh, 850 million metric ton. Based on the trend, you know. The, I'm not assuming that we'll develop <coughs> 80,000 or megawatt of coal in 12 plant. Out of this 850 million metric ton, I'll be uh, this uh, coal India is able to supply only 450 million metric That is 400. I have either come from captive generation, captive coal for captive coal mines, or from some other small state coal mines. Despite of that, we have to import 350 million metric ton from the globe. Now, this globe is looking towards coal as a polluting source. They are putting carbon tax. They are putting all green taxes. Even China introduced J4 yesterday green tax. Everybody must say that. So, China has put tax on the coal. 
forget about OECD countries, Australia is one of the OECD countries. So when you see for a 40% requirement of food for the market, international market, you get not extract the cheap price, which is so environment conscious. So I don't see gold and fill all the gaps. We need to make it This is my understanding. And you will see this will come. This understanding will come to know later. Sir, but with recent uncertainties in Japan where there were nuclear disasters. So if we consider that also, then nuclear becomes more hazardous than the normal other fossil fuels. See, can we afford without nuclear? People say that every coal plant is killing, taking more lives, six times more lives than nuclear plant. See, there's a lobby. I mean, you are in the still in the that age. There's a lobby. It has hydro lobby of machinery has never been so strong. Right? There are a lot of lobbies going go, go, go on and on because if they install the chemicals, they have to sell the machines. Hydro lobby has ever been very poor lobby. I don't know why. So hydro is such a clean source of energy, such a cheap source in the long term. They could not push their machines. Right? So right now, nuclear lobby is slightly weak, you know. So you just wait, just wait. You will see that change. I am suggesting that without nuclear, I am not talking the nuclear energy in India. About pure gas. Do you agree with the film broadly or do you have any any suggestions to change it? I mean, do you think that we should have yeah? Natural gas. This is the assumption what we ask. We are assuming that more and more NGVs and electric cars will take this. Yeah. Yes? Sir, about the last slide when uh, we were talking about uh, 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 without nuclear. When you were saying that uh, we can't see, you know, meeting our capacities and all the demand without nuclear. What about the gas? Because uh, if you look at the gas, you you have new reserves coming in, which is coal bed methane. You have shale gas. You have uh, development going on in KGD six basin, yes, where yes. you got six percent out of there. I am not questioning the gas availability. Why? Because I see, even in spite of KG basin, we think that the shale gas is there. In our Russia. With shale there are other issues, but I see, I taken, I, I have taken one assumption here that over a period, my politicians or my policy makers will have an MSI, you know, and this Iran pipeline, turbulence and pipeline is actually coming to us. And even if we can import, you know, I told you, in LNG market also, the cost is not only 5.5 dollar landed cost, but because of this artificial, you know, linkedistic market, higher prices, we are being charged heavily. If I somehow use our buying power, you know, like Japan does, Japan, because Japan is very wealthy, very rich, they can afford 14.5, but even in Japan, there are 250 small buyers. And everybody is buying here. What they do, they fill up their demand and they appoint a Mitsubishi to negotiate in the market. If they individually go, they charge $80. If India can do this, you know, for LNG, we can have a price. And we are the market. We are a very good market. I think it's going to happen. It's happening also. The matter of the Ministry of Federal National Gas is flooding the demand and they're assessing this option. There should not be club the entire gas requirement and then we upon the international market and negotiate the pricing, you get a good price because Qatar is over cash. They have over, over cash. They can definitely come forward. Yes. So India is already planning a huge best food thermal power plant. Mm -hmm. They are also becoming a bit uh lots of new because they're also there are also buying from so as you were saying that in four hundred seven two thousand seventeen this carbon taxes and all this is and yeah. huge cost of the coal. What do you see in the present because as per the plan? And on side of renewables, I've seen that the Indian government is very much introducing and they're saying that within for the first phase of the JNS it will be compared to the big parity. So what is no, you are asking a very direct question that what will happen if India will impose carbon tax yeah. on the coal and uh, that definitely, you know, we see the towards of this event exactly, exactly, you know. I was just seeing the cost of externalities, you know, every coal units additional cost of environmental degradation that is around 25 cents. Yes, natural gas, because natural gas produces around 40% less carbon, so now 17 cents. So if you add all these externalities, you know, an equivalent amount of carbon tax is imposed upon coal, I see in 2016-17 gas, even at 40 dollars, is worth buying. We are not imposing. All across the globe, what has happened? Countries or national governments are supporting renewable by giving the subsidy, but they are not paying the environment cost. Yes. They are very happy to give the subsidies, but they are not putting the carbon tax. Though it should happen simultaneously. I think if you put the carbon tax, then you don't have subsidy. Because you are artificially reducing the price by giving the subsidy. Yes. Instead, it's better to put the environmental cost 
on the other fuels, carbon gas, yes, so that it goes up and there's a market value. Yes. So it's not happening because politicians are yet to come to their senses that they have to charge the gas at their actual price. Yeah. Now, in the video, there is two items. One, in which the political opinion process cannot be put together. But secondly, the the whole service of India itself, you know, we have to check that some type of electricity coal. Which one do you see as a problem? I see coal because with coal, one thing is coming up which is carbon capture. The carbon capture Canada, some part of Denmark also, they have a good job. And they are able to you know, capture the carbon. So even you can you can say clean coal technologies are coming in United States. Though it costs huge right now, it's costing around I think uh, 65 additional dollars per megawatt hour, which is increasing the cost. But gradually the technology will be developed and this carbon capture cost will come down. Once it comes down, I think even coal will become a very good resource for producing clean power. About nuclear, I think nuclear, my, I will give this opinion that, you know, it was purely a political phenomenon which happened in political of right now, you know. Yeah. Jalita came and, you know, she just created the, you know, because sometimes political agenda. Jaipur also when the Congress was created. But if you see as energy professionals, as energy professionals, you should understand what is nuclear. You cannot just be carried by the political factor. Like Mamta Gandhi was saying that, why you are charging? Pandora 1, Pandora 6, Pandora 6 is more. She don't understand what is two sides. Because she is driven by the particular factors. Don't be careful by that. You are energy professionals. And you'll be working in government also. You may be working in MNC company also. Try to put your point across professional. You know technology. You know financing. You know the commercial aspects. So I think if we can take or we can address the issues of safety, which is definitely because Japan plant people are saying 35 over there are old technologies. So the technologies are much better. Now, even IEA, which is Vienna-based Atomic Energy Agency body, they are saying that it's very easy to compare, you know, or discard Japanese episode because they have real technology. The technology has gone far ahead. So nuclear controversy, I think, particularly if you see the dynamics, you know, if you see the merit order curve of different fields, nuclear is best off of it. First is hydro, then wind, and then nuclear. So if you like to really reduce the price, like the reliability. I will take just last one, the last one question because I have to wait. Yeah? The question is not related to your article. My article. Yes, sir. The decision should be honest. What I understood from that article is it has to happen. Nobody is going to stop that. Because they have become huge debt on the banking sector. If they will go bankrupt, they will pull down the entire banking sector. So, so we have poor technology. We have been made a success story like uh, in media, then like Mumbai and Goa. So, why is taking so kind of sharing? Should I say read my book? <laughs> <laughs> Answer is part of economic factor. No sense. No sense. Everybody knows it. Even bureaucrats know it. Politician knows it. But as a common political will, it is not there. Because there is a lot of, you know, uh, politically sensitive factors associated with distribution reforms, which nobody can touch from a regulator. But it has to happen. I mean, ultimately, we mortgage the gold you know, to create the reform. Same thing will happen, you know. The downside consumer are going to create a kind of, you know, atmosphere where politician has to understand that if don't they don't do the reforms, they're gone. They lose election. They stop. Saving the election, they lose the elections. I think it's going to happen soon. In one year, we expect this. So, again, in relation to the RI, this is last question. I have to go. I'm very really really sorry. I'm really sorry. But I have a meeting in fact. And I have to go. I have to rush. Sir, it's because you've said that this uh, uh, change has to happen. But right now, Kalkar is offering his first boot for transmission. Yeah. So, do you think that boot will influence larger players and create smaller monopolies because if the reason that distribution sector is, is found is usually been a monopoly distribution mm -hmm. but now with, with you know this uh, other players coming in so they, they form smaller monopolies in areas where they bid for so do you think that this this number is entirely wrong in fact Kalkta who is building the transmission line and we are talking about distribution mm -hmm. allowing or uh, attracting the investment in transmission sector which is there since 2003 but now more and more Operators, the both operators are coming. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. But again, when they are building the lines, they are regulated assets, right? Mm -hmm. In distribution reform, we are asking to bring competition. 
both are entirely different things. But they will be able to resist. And what we are talking about, that please bring the competition. Instead of Dishcom monopolies, break the Dishcoms and their supply part. The supply part should be given to the private individuals so that they can supply to the consumers instead of just one monopoly Dishcoms. Let the retail suppliers come in the market, which is the act of sky form. In case of transmission, even if they build, they are just making the investments, they will get transmission charges, they will be a part of the regulatory. I can have one more lecture on this because you will understand the dynamics of this. Thank you very much.